All right, fig lovers, this is Ross the Fig Boss. Today's video, we are evaluating fig trees. And what I mean is we're evaluating if you have a fig tree, it's a really good time right now to evaluate your fig tree to see if there's anything that needs to be done. Is there anything that uh, your tree needs at this point? To help you do this, I made a blog post many years ago. It's called the Fig Tree Timeline. And if you go to the link in the description, you guys can go and read about it. And essentially what it says is that 15 to 45 days after your last frost, fig trees experience sap flow and metabolic rate increases. It's ideal for up potting and planting, starting our propagation, like rooting, grafting, and air layering, and taking advantage of the warmer soil. We continue with regular maintenance and care like fertilizer. We may wanna do some thinning of new shoots we also stake our branches. We did a video just recently on that. We may want to do some repotting. Um, there are many different things. Planting as well, about 15 to 45 days after your last frost. And then that kind of leads us now, once we get past all of that maintenance, we're now going to evaluate our fig trees. And that's what this video is about, evaluating your fig trees two months after your last frost. So we're going to look at things like, is our fig tree fruiting? Does it have the beginnings of fruit formation on it? Is the tree healthy? Um, you know, is, uh, is our tree need any sort of special care so that we can help it a little bit, push it into fruiting? Because if we're not seeing fruits by now, at least with most of my trees here in the Philadelphia area, um, there's not any sort of um, panic that needs to set in. But certainly I am starting to see the beginnings of fruit formation on all of the trees for the most part. Uh, there may be some stragglers here and there, and that's normal depending on the variety. Each variety will, will actually show the figs, the smaller figs on the branches a little bit later than others. Some are really early to do that. And so, but you can typically start to see this process right now it's uh the perfect time in the philadelphia area and probably for most of you guys have already have seen if you're in a warmer climate the beginnings of this fruit formation like i said so if you're not seeing this look really closely at your branches you have where the leaf stem attaches to the branch there should be two distinct dots one of the dots depending on how progressed it is it's harder to determine if there are two or just one. But one of the dots is a new fig, as you can see here very clearly on this branch. And then one of them is a new branch. So um, if let's say the growth tip were to be taken off by pinching, let's say as an example, well then these buds have a chance to form a new branch later down in a couple weeks. So that's what the branch buds are for, the vegetative buds are for. Uh, but then, of course, if you get everything right with your fig tree, you have the right amount of soil moisture, the right amount of fertilizer in your soil, and you also have the right amount of sunlight. Primarily, it is the sunlight. If you get that right, uh, also, by the way, hormones. You have to have the right hormones in your trees. So this is like a four-part problem. And that's why we talk so much in the past about these issues, each one of them individually. Hormones are affected by pruning. If we do excessive pruning, there's a chance we can force our fig tree into a state in which it doesn't want to fruit and it only really wants to grow. If we don't feed them enough, we don't have the adequate nutrients, of course they're going to be less reluctant to fruit and be productive. Same thing with water, if we stop that water, the trees are typically at that point going to stop growing and you may even have the beginnings of fruit formation and that could completely stall and the fruit formation can stop completely because of that if you're not giving it enough water. So it's really important that the water has to continue, the fertilizer probably has to continue to some degree, which is why I like to use the slow release fertilizer that we talked about in the video a few, a few weeks ago, maybe a month ago at this point. But really, when we did the last video, it was all about that sunlight. And if we don't have the right amount of sunlight, these, these fruit buds will just not form. And that's really, like I said, the number one thing that is important for getting your fig tree to fruit. So what we do 
instead of just putting our fig tree into more sunlight, we actually open up the center of the trees. We bend the branches, we shape the trees properly. We don't really use pruning to shape the trees a whole lot. You can, um, and there's videos I've done on that if you are interested, but typically when we wanna increase the sunlight to our trees, we can open up the centers just by using stakes, uh, by using limb spreaders, by using uh, other methods I talked about with the twine that we talked about in the recent video. And so just by opening up these branches and making sure they're having that sunlight, there's a much higher chance that they're going to fruit. Now that it is about the 24th, uh, 25th of May, all these trees should have the fruit formation here. And if they don't, then I have to say, okay, is there something else wrong with the tree? Like this branch here, as an example, has a lot of fig mosaic virus. So if this has a lot of the virus, I can't expect this particular branch to be very productive. Maybe it'll throw out a couple fruits here and there, depending on the severity of the virus, which is where some of the pruning that we mentioned comes in, in the prior video as well. Um, but if we're not seeing that, well then maybe something has to be done, right? We have to look at the fertilizer, we have to look at the water, we have to look at, again, all these things I mentioned. This tree here is an example. Did a lot of pruning to rejuvenate this, to make it healthier. It took a long time to actually wake up. Some of you guys may not even have a fig tree that's awake just yet. So this is a really good example of this particular fig tree is that I'm going to actually top it because it doesn't have a whole lot of branching. You can see down there, it's a single stem whip that comes up from the bottom there of the soil. And I did not prune away the apical bud this winter time. I allowed the apical bud to continue to grow. This probably was a somewhat of a weaker tree going into this growing season. So I decided to keep it. And instead, this apical bud continued to grow. Now here's the new apical bud, or at least the continuation of it. And we've got some pretty good uh, growth here. The fruits are forming right in there. We also have really nice, healthy, larger leaves. The larger leaves to me is a signal that the tree is making use of more sunlight that it has access to. And typically the trees don't have a lot of branching. So this is a surefire way of knowing that your tree probably needs more branching. And the way to force it to do that, to form the scaffolds that we want during the summer, during the growing season, it's a huge benefit to do this because you save a whole growing season is to come in here and remove the growth tip. So by doing some pinching, we change the hormones, we allow some new buds to form, these new branch buds, the vegetative buds, I should say, they'll form new branches, new scaffolds. It also allows some of the scaffolds down here that are not really growing because of the dominance that was in place. The highest bud on the tree forces the dominance is, is really, it's located there. Once you remove the dominance, now it allows some of these lower scaffolds to try to achieve that dominance. It go for the sunlight and grow as high and as strongly as possible. This is gonna encourage the branching that we want. So we're going case by case to each tree. Some of them might be unhealthy. We need to do maybe a little bit more pruning in the winter time next year. Some of them may not have the right form and we're gonna actually remove the apical bud, which I do on all of the young trees here. These are some I've just repotted from one gallon pots. And what I'll do is another example, here's a tree that I ended up picking up from a friend of mine. And so instead of just letting it grow as a single stem whip all season, the leaves are large, plenty of photosynthesis, plenty of room to grow. I need to uh, attach it here to the stake, but I will remove this growth point right here. And now it's going to branch out and get the right form and save me an entire growing season of having to instead cut this way back this winter time and then allow the scaffolds to form next year. Why would I waste my time if I can get really good scaffold formation this season and then have a really nice productive fig tree next season. Fig mosaic virus and pruning to alleviate that. Here are some of the trees that we have pruned back quite heavily. They are still actually growing rather slowly, which is a bit surprising. This one down here took this, this style of pruning really well and now has a main shoot that is extremely healthy that I can use as the main trunk of the tree going forward. And what I can do is just very simply pinch off some of these shoots if I wanted, 
This will stop them from growing or at least slow down their growth and allow this one to achieve the dominance. Or I can just completely remove them down there by just either pruning them off or rubbing them off with my, with my hand. But that is really it. I'm just, like I said, really important time of the year going around to evaluate each individual case by case tree. And um, thank you guys for watching this. Please do me a favor, check out the blog, figboss.com. There's so much great information there and you're gonna be shocked at how helpful that blog post is, the fig tree timeline. That way, if you're ever lost throughout the growing